Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I'm going to be sharing an excerpt from the Creating the Impossible program. Uh, in the program, the excerpt is actually called Beyond Hard Work, but I'm calling it Goals versus Miracles. And I'm including it today partly because if you're listening to this in real time, there are a couple of special offers around Creating the Impossible. This is the last week, February, what is it? February uh, 5th to the uh, 12th, 10th, actually, I think, where you can join the Creating the Impossible program. So if you're interested in joining in this program, it's an amazing program. It's 13 weeks, 90 days long, and you'll be joining in the third week, which is the last week we allow new people to join. And you can find out more about that at michaelneal.org forward slash CTI, but also because this month, so from February 6th to March 6th, You'll be able to buy the CTI, uh, Creating the Impossible book, the ebook, uh, from uh, the Kindle store, from the iTunes store, from the Nook store with Barnes & Noble, um, pretty much any online store that sells uh, ebooks, you'll be able to get Creating the Impossible, a 90-day program to get your dreams out of your head and into the world for only $1.99. So I hope you enjoy the audio, and I'll see you on the other side. And today we're going to look at the difference between a goal and a miracle. And the reason we're going to look at that difference is because the way we think about goals and the way we think about miracles actually kind of ties into the way we think about creating the impossible. If we choose something for our impossible project that we really, really think is impossible, then essentially we're choosing a miracle. We're saying, I don't see a way for me to get from where I am to there. I don't see a way that I can create that. So it's going to take a miracle. Well, what looks impossible to you now would look miraculous. But as you go, as a path starts to emerge, when you jump and the net suddenly appears, somewhere along the way, it, it will look less miraculous and more just a function of how things actually work. So the purpose of us talking about this distinction right here on day two is because this is the week where you're going to choose your impossible project, the thing that you're going to focus on over these 90 days. And you want to be sure that you pick something that you can't do through hard work alone, that your will is insufficient to create, that if you just buckle down, that still wouldn't be enough to bring it into being. So in a way, you're looking for something that would take a miracle. Now, that's very contrary to the way that we think about goals, right? So we think about goals as well. I'm going to set the goal and I'm going to go out and I'm going to achieve it and I'm going to have a plan and I'm going to work my plan. Well, the point of an impossible project is that that in and of itself wouldn't be enough. So in choosing your impossible project, you want to choose something that you might not be inclined to put on a goal list because you'd be pretty sure that you were going to fail. Like when I told my wife about this program way back in 2009 when I first said, yeah, I want to do a program to help people create the impossible. And in order to do it, they need to set a, a goal or a project that they, they have less than a 20% chance of succeeding at, ideally one that they figure they have less than a 5% chance of succeeding at. She said, well, why would I set a goal that I'm going to fail at? And I said, well, you wouldn't. But this isn't about setting a goal. It's about setting a direction. It's about sitting in L.A. and saying, I want to get to London. It's about sitting in London and saying, I want to get to Paris. It's about sitting in Paris and saying, I want to get to Nepal. Well, how are you going to get there? I have no idea. But I know where it is I want to get to. I know the direction that I want to travel. I have some sense of what it is I'd like to create, to bring into being in the world that does not exist now, that will exist by the time that I'm done. And that's how you choose your impossible project. So I give some examples in the book, but to make it really simple, go ahead and, 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 and make a list of three things that, that you'd put on a goal list, three things you'd really like but you think, you know what, probably if I was willing to commit to this, if I was willing to put in the hours, I could pull this off. 
and then write down three things that would seem almost miraculous if they came to pass over the next 90 days. And you'll get a sense for yourself of how those lists differ. And that's going to inform you in choosing your impossible project. But th the other thing that I want you to kind of have in the back of your mind today as you go through your day is what in your world could you not have predicted? What do you have now in your life? What have you done in your life that was kind of miraculous in the sense that you didn't make it happen and yet you love that it's part of your life. You love that it happened. Because that's going to start to, to both give you a clue about how the seemingly miraculous is already a part of your world. But it's also going to open you up to possibilities that maybe you're not thinking of right now because they seem too far out of reach, too much of a long shot, hardly worth even thinking about. I hope you enjoyed the excerpt and that you'll take the time to do the exercise. Just as a reminder, you can get the ebook. Uh, of Creating the Impossible, a 90-day program to get your dreams out of your head and into the world at uh, all good online booksellers near you, which is basically on your computer, between February 6th and March 6th, 2018. And also you can join the Creating the Impossible 2018 online program with me as your online coach by going to michaelneal.org forward slash CTI. Have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon.